Hey everybody, welcome back for another day in our cycle series. You've made it to day eight. We have a lighter day at us today, or for us, coming at us, whatever. I have a set of 12s and I have a set of eight that I'm gonna be using today. Let's go ahead and get warmed up. I'm gonna hit up the mat, hands and knees. Go ahead and spread open those fingertips nice and wide. Just rest back uh, evenly between your hands and legs, and then we're just gonna shift. Shift back, pushing the hips over those heels, and then drive as far forward as possible. Shift back, we're gonna get our breath going. And then again. Perfect, stay up and turn your fingertips towards your knees. Just bend one elbow and the other. Getting a little bit more stretch through the wrists, the hands, the forearms. And then turn those hands back around, level back off. And we're going to go through some cat cow. Inhale to open the chest. This is our cow pose. Really slide those shoulder blades down. Take a deep inhale. And then with your exhale, push into the ground. Act like you're trying to root your hands and knees down. Tuck in through the chin, round through the upper back. Just one more like that. Inhale, open that chest, slide the shoulder blades down. And then exhale and round. All right, let's go through our thread the needle. Inhale to bring your right arm up nice and high. And then exhale, we're going to slide that right arm under, reaching through as far as possible. And then push yourself over to that right side just a little bit more, seeing if you can stretch deeper through the right shoulder. Press yourself up. Other side, left arm comes up. Inhale. Oh, exhale, slide through. Again, kind of pushing yourself to the left with your right arm. And then push yourself up. Let's hit up our downward facing dog. Drive those hips up and back. Ooh, feel those calves. I think all of our little box runs yesterday tightened up those calves. So this is a good flush. Double check your core. Always checking triple check, quadruple check. Hollow out your armpits. Slide the shoulder blades together. Grab deep into the core. Bring your body forward. Up over those fingertips, tuck your tailbone, feel that core engage, and then drive back. Inhale back. Exhale forward. One more like that. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Bring your left leg up outside your left hand. Just let that back hip drop a sec. Put it back. Right leg forward. Left leg back. And then walk your hands back to the feet. Hang over those legs. Shift left and right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We are going to hit up a front and back lunge. So we're going to go 10 each direction. In this one, I'm just going to go body weight. You're welcome to hold some light weights if you would like. But uh, I'm going to go I'm going to go body weight. Hopefully I have <laughs> enough space. So we're just going to lunge forward and then lunge back. That's one. Try to get your full range. Try to keep your feet on railroad tracks, right? So instead of walking on a tight rope, we're going to stay on railroad tracks. You're going to keep that core nice and engaged. Knees and toes lined up. Eight. Feel those legs pushing you where you want to go. And ten. Beautiful. Other side. Step forward. Step back. Feel the chest lift, that core engage. I think about which muscles you're using. So this is a lot about hip mobility, right, in a sense. Just getting those hip joints to move forward and back the direction that they should, keeping that pelvis stable by using the core and glutes. All right, that's my 10. Next up, we're gonna do a single leg deadlift. I'm gonna grab both my 12s, set your left leg on the ground, right leg goes back, small little bend in your supporting knee, flex forward using the leg, so that hamstring and glute as a big part of your stability. 
And then that back leg, try to keep it as flexed, straight, and strong as possible. Here's our nine and 10. The goal is not necessarily to touch the ground. The goal is to keep the pelvis stable. So square to the ground, build strength and muscle in the glute and hamstring, strengthen the core, balance. Again, that mobility. So we have that hinge on the right side, but that back leg is staying fixed with the shoulder nine and 10, okay? And then we're gonna do our locomotive, left leg forward, right leg back, sink deep, pull one elbow at a time, twisting just a bit through the mid back, reach the chest up off the rib cage, focus on your back and core here, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, three more sets, back into that front back lunge. I'm gonna get up in your business here. Two, three, four. There we go. Five, check in. Keep those toes and knees straight ahead. Check in with that core. Find your glutes. Try not to put everything in the quads. There's our 10. Other side. Three, four, Two more, squaring off those hips, and 10. Okay, I'm gonna start with my right leg down this time for our single leg deadlift. Square off, knee and toe. Think about your breath. Think about your body, the whole thing. Where are you holding support? What's going on everywhere? Try not to just get lost in the count. As you are very well aware, I do not get lost in the count. I just lose the count. Seven. And 10. Other side. Three, five, keep it going. See if you can tell whether or not those hips are level. Keep them as level as possible. Flex tighter through that core. Give me two more. This time for our locomotive, right leg goes forward, left leg stays back. Here we go, tighten, flex, three, four, eight, nine, ten. Okay, back to that front, back, lunge. Here we go. Third set, we're going to four. Tighter core, grip those thighs, nine, 10. Two, 
two, three, four, feel that core, always flexing it up, get some core work going here, in the meantime, nine, ten, okay, back to that left side first, one, keep that flexion, the full time, trying not to relax. If you're falling over, don't worry. Just adjust, find a spot to focus on that's not moving, or maybe put your hand out on a wall or a chair. Find what works for you. Nine. And feel that back stay long. You want to keep that upper back packed in, trying not to round as we lower to the ground. Six. Nine and ten. Okay, back to that locomotive. Sink in. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, last set of work. Last set of this round. Make sure I make that clear. We're here for the work. Get that body moving. Keep yourself in a position. So whatever sort of intensity you can find for today, that will allow you to go heavy tomorrow. So tomorrow is our heavy day. This is 10, or we're gonna say it's 10. You got it. Four. Lengthen through the back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Notice what's going on with posture. Nine. And 10. And 10. All right. Single leg deadlifts. Kind of nice and light today. Three, having something both sides, uh, as far as weight selection goes, I think also really helps with balance. Feel how those lats are working to level off that upper back, your trunk and torso. Seven, eight, nine. I'm trying to point that back toe almost in just slightly because that back leg wants to kind of open out. We want it to stay shooting straight back. Four, five, check that core. Eight, nine, and 10. Locomotive, get into that back. Four, Eight, nine, 
10. Perfect. All right, join me on the ground. Back into that child's pose. Big toes together. Knees are out wide. Reach those arms forward. Shift your hips side to side. Okay, we're going to start off with a pendulum plank. This is our big core round. If planking doesn't work for you, keep one knee on the ground or hit up a bird dog and some cat cows, even just staying on hands and knees with a transverse abdominus draw is always totally effective and awesome. So we're gonna start with that pendulum plank. No weights needed for this round, high plank. Okay, kick one toe out and then just a little shuffle to the other. Two, three, gotta get that shoulder, those shoulders set right over the fingertips. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're gonna rotate onto the side and do a hip dip. Get into those obliques. We're gonna try to keep this the legs straight. Four, dropping and lifting straight up and down. Seven, eight, ten. Other side. Two, three, six, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to go into a body saw. Start kind of back behind those elbows and then drive forward. One. Not too fast, but you won't go too slow because we have another round I want to get through hopefully today. Six. This is focused on that core. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Flip over. We're going to go through just a quick little flip bridge set. Give those shoulders a break. This always feels good on the low back, I think. Here's four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I always kind of like to see what I can manage as far as heat and intensity on those because at this point in time, technically, they should be fairly easy, but I like to see just what I can get in terms of heat. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, other side first this time. You can always keep your knee down for your dips or cross the top leg over like this. Help give you some support. Seven, eight, nine, ten. You should be able to get to the point that your planks are not as much in your shoulders at all. Five, six, but you can find the work into the back. Nine, ten, and then our body saw to support those shoulders. So the back will support the shoulders. And then the core is really what's working to hold the body up. Five, eight, nine, and ten. Wonderful. Back onto our backs. Enjoy that bridge. Two, Seven, eight, still holding that core, and here's our ten. Okay, halfway through this block. Here we go for a pendulum plank. Oh man, I gotta get myself really far forward. 
Yes, definitely feeling the core there. So making sure those hips aren't poking up in an A-frame. Flex into that upper back. Support the shoulders. Make sure that that shoulder, that top shoulder, is directly over the elbow. Four. Eight, nine, ten. All right, back to that body saw. These are so good. If you really Dig into that focus. 10. Just like dead bugs or bird dogs, they look so easy. I always wonder, am I the only one that feels these so much? Or is everybody else getting into them also? That's kind of why I do think having a yoga practice at some point in time is extremely beneficial, helpful, and effective for training self-flexion. All right, last round. Let's see if I can get my <laughs> legs enough space. Here we go. Pendulum. Four. Length in the back. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right, side plank. Make sure you have that height. One, two, four. Really get those hips hiked up there. Seven, and ten. Other side. One, two. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, body saw, tuck, and flex. One, two, find where you get the most heat and the most grab, and then take a little pause there. So for me, when I'm hovered back, Eight, nine, ten. Okay. Back onto your back. Here we go. Ten glute bridges. Just enjoy. Three, four, five, six. Eight, nine. And 10. Stand your right leg long. Twist the left knee over. Other side, extend your left leg long. Twist your right knee over. Okay, let's hit that final block. We're gonna grab our eights. I'm gonna grab my eights. You grab whatever it is that you chose. We're gonna start with shoulder bellows. Elbows up in front of your shoulders. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Try to keep your hips, shoulders, and back nice and still and stable. Seven, eight, nine. Feel that upper back support. Ten. Palms face your thighs. Elbows come out wide. Upright row. Pinch your shoulder blades together. Pull the elbows wide. So the elbows are pulling away from the shoulders. And your shoulders are doing the lift. Seven, 
proud chest. Eight, strong core. Nine, ten. Okay, now kick backs. Hinge it forward. Bring your elbows up. Kick. One, two, three. I always like doing kick backs with eight pounds. Feel a little light at the start, but I think they really enable you to keep everything in that upper back stable, the elbows high. One, okay, back to our bellows. I think the shoulders are gonna get tired. So engage that back, stabilize with the core. Seven, eight, Upright row. Two, three, four. So your heels, hips, upper back, shoulders on the wall. Belly button pulling back. Pretend like there's a string attached to the back of the body. Hit your kickbacks. Pulling that belly button back toward your spinal column. Shoulder blades squeeze together. You're in control of that drop. There is zero momentum here. Three, two, and one. Okay, here we go. Two, three, four. As always, notice where you're stabilizing, what's flexing in the non-moving parts of the body to stabilize. Keep your form. 10. Upright row. Don't worry how far your hands come. Focus on those elbows. Pulling up, shoulder blades squeezing together. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kickbacks. Find those triceps. Two, three. Feel like you're lengthening through the spine. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, set your weights down. We are going to hit another set. Don't worry. I think it's better. Have a little break between. Other arm, stretch it over. Pull from behind. Left arm over to the right hip. Lean right ear to right shoulder. Right hand over to the left hip. Ooh, that one's tight. Left ear, left shoulder. All right, here we go. Last round, and then we'll get our stretch. Find your goal post. Hit those bellows. Four, set that pelvis, set your core. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we're shooting for that mid delt, right? Top part of the shoulder. So make sure the chest is tall. Make sure the shoulders are what's pulling. Tack that belly button back. Six, seven, lengthen through the neck, and ten. Okay, elbows up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. You should feel your lats engage a bit. That core we just worked. Four, five, lengthen that upper back. Seven, eight, feel the muscle you're wanting to work. And 10. Woo, beautiful job. All right, take it down onto the mat with me, onto your back. Hug both knees into the chest. Tuck your chin in. All right, extend that right leg long. And then we're gonna twist that left knee over the body like we did just a second ago. Put your left arm out away from you with your palm on the ground. It's actually kind of nice sometimes to have 
a weight or a wall or a post to anchor it on. And then every time you exhale, try to relax a little more. So as much as you can, keep your shoulders both rolled back, pushing into the ground. And then you're stacking the hips and that twist is coming through the mid back. All right, rotate back to center. And then let's head up the other side. Bring your left knee in. Put your right arm out, palm on the ground. And we're going to rotate that left knee over to, or I'm sorry, your right knee over to the left. Get my lefts and rights put together here. Should feel a little heated. That's super great. Awesome. Firm. <laughs> put together. Okay, let's rotate back to the middle. And then we're going to go ahead and flip it around to get some combo stretches. Bring your right leg forward. Actually, let's start on the left. I think I bring my right leg forward first all the time. So let's bring our left leg forward first. And then just find a position where you feel that back hip flexor. Let your hips rotate left and right. And then go ahead and take your left arm, bring it up and back. Okay, sit a little bit taller or sit up on that back knee. You're gonna need to pull the foot in, tuck the hips under, bring your right arm up, pushing your elbow back with your left hand to feel your tricep stretch. Try to stay into the front of that hip flexor and quad. Lean a little bit. Keep your breath going. Relax the neck. And then take both arms outside your left thigh. Keep the chest tall. Twist. Take your left arm behind. Open. And then we'll rotate back around and get that hamstring stretch. Extend the left leg forward, toes are up. Feel like your chest is getting pulled toward that toe. So you have this counter pull, right? From your heel that's stable and rooted into the ground, you're getting a pull back through the hip, and then you're getting that pull up through the crown of the head from your hip. Then slowly drop your chest toward that thigh. All right, just rotate this left foot into the ground and we're gonna get a little bit of a inner thigh stretch. Maybe your groin is a little sore from our Copenhagen's yesterday. So we'll stretch that, that puppy out. And then let's just go ahead and revolve all the way around to that other side. Now our right legs forward, left leg back, shift those hips around. If you feel a spot needs a little bit of a hold, stay there. Bring that right arm up and back, stretching through the chest. Remember, exercise is such a small portion of health and wellness. It's a huge portion, but a small portion also. There's just a lot more we can put into it. Bring that right leg back as far as just building muscle. There's also mental health, emotional health, all combined so that one kind of bleed into the next. You're working so hard here physically, add in some mental practice as well. Take time to de-stress, twist over that front leg, right arm goes back. Make sure that you're finding balance and care for yourself and care for others, right? We promote those in society that uh, give up kind of their own health for the sake of others. Good old Mother Teresa syndrome, which is awesome and amazing, 
but also remember that you have to give back to yourself at some point or else you cannot have the level of care for others. But there's a balance. All right, rotate because caring for others also makes you feel super good giving back to the world, back to society and your community is also an aspect of health, but not to the detriment of your own health. So find your balance. Balance is tough, but you can find it. It's a practice, just like everything else. All right, everybody, fantastic job. As always, thank you for joining me. Make sure that you show back up tomorrow. We'll get some heavy weights done and uh, we'll keep it going. <laughs>